there's other places, other spaces in time that it all God can be at rest, the resting place is upon the earth. The Nazarene Bible gives you the answer. Well, Mount Carmel for a start. But it speaks of the aliens coming in. Everything no, no, not did not mention the word aliens. The Luciferians. The Luciferians. Oh, they're the same thing, aren't they? The Luciferians. The fallen angels. The fallen angels. So they're yeah. the aliens. If you want to see aliens, you see aliens. Well, the fallen angels. They're all here, right? Mm, so right. all these all these battles and these millions of, of incomprehensible mansions each time. They give it their best shot. And I beat them there as well. Mm. So now the grand finale is the earth. Because this is the your reality. You can't go on what happened before you were conscious as a child. Mm. But that's all hearsay. And you know that history is rewritten a thousand times over by the victor. Mm. But then they, if someone else wins, they write, rewrite it again. <clears throat> so the battle. I've been to Roswell, New Mexico. Mm. I went there and I sat there with a Freemason on the sixth floor of a bank building where they had, he told me, because I'm a Freemason, aren't I? Scottish right. Shake hand. Handshake. So he blabs his guts, what's going on? His name was um, Walter Holt. His partner, or wife, his name's Peter. He was the man who was a public relations officer that reported the incident at Roswell and saw the bodies himself. There's one that was still alive. That's a story peddler. So I also meet on that same trip. Oh, by the way, the latitude of Roswell is Messiah. And the noise. Same as I am. Those two evil ends of the stick, right? Because mm. that's my first wife, which, for that one for recording this. Um, she's, her latitude, uh, where she was conceived and grew up, was uh, 3323, which is uh, the anointed Messiah, Mashiach, Christ. <coughs> so uh, Roswell. I think the number is something around 104, <coughs> something. And that is gives you the uh, longitude. And where I was, talking to this Freemason, who was saying that he was a public relations officer for the 503rd uh, Strategic Air Command, Roswell. And he saw the body. And he made the announcement. And then they tried to close it up. Well, the best way to perpetuate a lie is to, to um, close it up make it top secret so then it leaks out so, so they can convince you that there are aliens <laughs> well there are they've all come down in spirit form Lucifer Satanists demonists every type of abomination you can think of it's coming from another realm of thought because it was written thousands of years ago so Think of that realm as thought as being a planet. Many realms in my father's house, because each year there's another realm, if you like, on the earth. You go from year to year. Now, if you continue to eat flesh of a butchered animal that's terrorised to death, you allow the spirits of these former realms, mansions, where they were defeated and cast out, cast out where? To the bottomless pit in hell, where is you are now. So they are all gathered here, these vultures of death, to keep you eating meat, <coughs> sacrificing your children, eating their flesh, drinking their blood, feeding it out through McDonald's and so forth. Hundreds of thousands go missing. I think it's a hundred thousand a year in America, right? Go missing. And these are the, the rabbis that's doing that. Because the rabbis have infiltrated to Freemasonry, and if you're a Freemason, you're a going to be in a lot of trouble. So this is another realm of Solomon that goes back to the times of 
of the invention of the stories in the Bible that are hearsay. You weren't there. And it's got the story of Solomon. Well, they're winning the battle at the moment, so therefore they write the history. And this is why the air statement is so important, is that as a child, um, two lads were in the Catholic school I went to. I was 2424 days old. And uh, 31st of, or 30th of August, 1940, 1950. Something like that. So I'm six years old, so I was 950. One said, Jesus was the said you say. The other one said, Oh, no. the Pharisee. I went into a rage. And I, I was, they were nine years old, so they were about three years older than me. And I was going to punch it like that. And I screamed, Jesus. And then, as I was diving forward, I found myself in another realm on the way into the uh, same stronghold. Mm. This is Mount Carmel. And um, they are the true Essene, while well, the ones that caused the crucifixion was the um, Essenes of Homer. So, <clears throat> by eating animal flesh that's been terrorised to death, it makes you yourself become um, sickened by the chemicals that these, these animals have been uh, tortured on throughout their life. And finally, are butchered to death in a sacrificial manner, then they get you to eat it. And interwoven with that throughout the, the industry are the uh, children that disappear after their blood has been consumed by the Satanists um, that are the original cult of the Talmudism. <coughs> um, I debated with the Institute of Humanities Rabbi Cohen, Melvin Turek, and had been in to see where the abomination of desolation, the uh, likeable looking old Jew that was saying that um, they were the chosen race and that um, all non Jews are animals with hands placed on them the earth to serve them. And then they had a uh, nice young family <clears throat> and then it flashed over to uh, four cows standing in a paddock ready for slaughter. Right, so you got your aliens? I've been to Roswell. From there I went to um, Five Alabama and uh, there met a man called Oliphant, who happened to be the uh, strategic air command in Belgium that had uh, uh, been the people that had verified aliens and that um, the strategic high command was where the seven youngsters uh, that were top security uh, Police people are supposed to have left the uh, Belgium high security, flown AWOL, flown back to America, got into America, and then went out preaching that the Iraq war was going to become coming and all sorts of stuff. It's all planned, isn't it? So, what they had done, <coughs> they not foreseen uh, prophecy, they foreseen plan. And the plan was all these things that she, he seen, they seen. I'm sitting in the uh, Shoreline Park before going to Roswell and by Alabama. 
and a man called Jacobson. His daughter was engaged to one of the fellows that was in the Strategic Air Command in Belgium that had gone AWOL, and that he and she was in a car and were stopped by the state troopers and were arrested and then he told the story that what spooked them was Jesus was coming back to golf for his flow on a UFO. Now the fact that the message was a bit written in an ancient Hebrew language of Palestine um, became the reason why they could get on a jet, go out, go away while I panic, and were protected by angels to get to America. That later became a, uh, on a TV uh, conspiracy program that was running for a while. A story where this young fella said that you've got to be very careful who you're dealing with, and that's what he told the coppers when he was arrested. So he's the boyfriend of the lady that was the daughter of Jacobson that I was talking to in Shoreline Park. And I said, Jesus ain't coming on a UFO, he's coming on a dig, you know, dig, dodge, <laughs> dig that. blue one with a silver blue one with a final top. But these extraordinary things then led me through to Fife, Alabama, um, where I met a man who was in the Strategic Air Command, um, uh, Oliphant, his name was, Fred Oliphant. And um, when I arrived there, now Pauline is a witness here. Her phone number is 720-5513 in Port Aldoni. The police are 2424. Jesus. They all know me. So you can verify where I am at all times and what I've done, and I've been open and honest all the way through, as even now that my phone number is open to the world, thanks to the trolls. They fell for the trap. <laughs> so anyone can ring me. Come, come and drop in for a cup of tea. Listen to some piano. So the SN's got it right. <clears throat> this is um, the Nazarene Book of Malachi. Behold, I bring a message from Elohim. I declare unto you a mighty work that shall be accomplished in Israel. Because you listen not to the voice of God and Goddess within you, they have sent Nazarene prophets in bodies of flesh to speak the truth to you, but you have not listened to those prophets. Yea, you have slain them. Thus it is that our Lord and Lady themselves, our God imminent and Goddess imminent, shall come to you in human garb and speak the truth. Yea, Elohim shall come speak to you. They will not force you to listen. Little will they exercise their transcendental powers. They will appear to you as humans and speak as humans. What powers they do exercise will only be that which all human beings are capable of. They will plant heavenly seeds in fertile ground. Yea, they will not reveal themselves to the world as God and Goddess, but as perfect children of God and Goddess. Only to the elect shall the truth be revealed, for they come into the world to be patterns for righteous conduct, examples for the sons and daughters of humankind. Yea, they, shall, they will be rejected by many, but those who accept them will save their souls and become an eternal race. But this is a great mystery, and here is another mystery. They will be, re, they will be reborn and 
die as humans, that they may enter the subtle regions of this planet and cast out parasites. And this will be the sign that they have come into the world. The prophet Elijah shall return to the earth. He will be called John, for his coming is an act of mercy and graciousness of our God and Goddess. <laughs> yea, Elijah will reincarnate in Israel and prepare a remnant to meet Yahde and Yana, our Lord and Lady. He will come as a voice crying in the wilderness, make straight a path for the Lord. He will bring a baptism of repentance. He will invite the nation of Israel to join with the Essene, Nazarene remnant in preparing to meet our Lord and Lady. Behold, the Son of Righteousness comes with healing in, his, in its seven rays and this sun shall be planted as a seed within the hearts and minds of all those who receive our Lord and Lady. So that was then. In both the mainstream Bible and the Nazarene Bible, the Essene way, the last book of the Old Testament is Malachi, but there are major differences in the two versions of Malachi. For example, in the mainstream version, Malachi prophesies a messianic son of righteousness that will burn the wicked to ashes. Nazarene Malachi prophesies a messianic son of righteousness with healing in its seven rays which kills nobody. Later, in the Nazarene New Testament, we learn that the seven rays are the seven parts of the sevenfold peace. And those kill parasites. All about the body, mm -hmm. the temple, mm -hmm. cleaning out the temple. There's still water, bicarbonate. Yep, that's my level. Raw juices and fruits, vegetables, <laughs> fruits. So, what's your conclusion on the Nazarene Bible? Well, it's more accurate than the other one, and it's calling the other one for exactly what it is, mm. isn't it? Mm. And they are preparing the Armageddon script. We've said that all along. It's them. They're doing it all. They want their Armageddon of a bloody nuclear war. Mm. It's them. It's the Luciferians. It's the demons. The parasites. Mm. And the reason they've been able to do that is they've got the whole world eating feet. Mm. In particular. Mm. Or their own children. Mm. In particular. In particular. Under a thousand a year in the United States. Right? At least. I think I believe it's many more than that in the US. <clears throat> now, feed it back to the victim. Now, um, Many of the famous Old Testament prophets of the mainstream Bible, including Malachi, Moses, Isaiah and Elijah, also appear in the Nazarene Old Testament, but in each case the words and deeds of the prophets differ, differ from one Bible to the other. In the sacrificial cult version, that is the mainstream version, the prophets are very often violent and in several instances murder people, and their words seem to lack wisdom. But in the Nazarene version, the same prophets are non-violent and wise. It is important to realise that there was not two Malachi's, two Moses or two Isaiah's, etc. Rather, the sacrificial cult altered, altered the true scriptures, which is what you've been saying all along, to make them support their own bloody activities. When one reads the sacrificial cult version of the book of Malachi, one sees quite clearly the reason for the alteration, to defend the system of animal sacrifice and scare people into giving better tithes and offering. Clearly this is the main theme of the mainstream Malachi. Oh yeah. 
despite the heavy alterations of the mainstream book of Malachi. Like the Nazarene version quoted above, it predicts that the Messianic age will begin with the return to the earth of the prophet Elijah, who was John the Baptist. But whereas the mainstream Malachi prophesies that Elijah will return to prepare the way for a male Christ only, the Nazarene Malachi prophesied that the reincarnated Elijah would prepare the way for the Lord and Lady Christ. Which book says that? Malachi? Hmm. Yeah. The good version. Yeah, the Nazarene version. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so where do we get hold of the Nazarene Bible? Uh, I will see. We can get Say on, my dear, say on. Yeah, see. It's the sound of one hand clapping, I see. Daughter of Zion. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Other Nazarene prophets likewise declared the future coming of both the Lord Christ and Lady Christ. Of these prophets, Micah even used a Hebrew term for the Lady Christ, which is the exact equivalent of the English life termed the Magdalene. Before we quote the, those verses from the Nazarene Micah, I wish to point out that a trace of this Messianic Magdalene prophecy still survives in the mainstream Bible book of Micah. However, that Magdalene reference in mainstream Micah can only be detected if you read the key term in Hebrew. For all these centuries, Greek and English readers of the mainstream Bible have missed the following Messianic reference to the Magdalene. In Micah 4 8, we read in English. As for you, O watchtower of the flock, O stronghold of the daughter of Zion, the former dominion will be restored to you. Kingship will come to the daughter of Jerusalem. In English, one does not notice any possible reference to the Magdalene in the above verse from mainstream Micah. But the English term watchtower of the flock in the above verse in Hebrew Magdal Eder. The most common meaning of the word Magdal in Biblical Hebrew is watchtower. The word is also used in the Bible for high pulpit, a tall platform from which royalty or priests could address a crowd. The word Eder means flock and is usually used in reference to sheep, not cattle. It is from the word Magdal that the biblical town of Magdala takes its name, probably from the fact the town featured a tall watchtower. Although watchtowers are not in the forefront of the minds of we moderns in ancient Israel, they were prominent and meaningful. In an article by Herschel Shanks in Biblical Archaeology, he reports that most towns and even large homesteads in ancient Egypt, Israel featured large watchtowers. Uh, thus, in ancient Israel, a watchtower, Magdal, was viewed affectionately as a place of refuge from violence. 
what have I told you over and over? That place of refuge that I wanted to establish. Mm. As well as a loud, look, sorry, as well as a lordly symbol of ownership or rulership over a region. And as previously stated, the same word was also used for the high pulpit, used by royalty or priests to address the people. Note, in the mainstream book of Makkah, the word is spelled Magdal, but in the Nazarene um, Makkah, it is spe spelled Magdala. Both spellings are fine. The A-H ending in the Nazarene version simply is a feminine ending. In the light of the above definitions and explanations, the amazing thing about the way the term Magdal Eda is used in Micah is that it is used as a sort of messianic title, the Magdal Eda. While it is fascinating that a messianic prophecy featuring a messianic title, which is the Hebrew equivalent of the Ingersoll's term the Magdalen, has survived in the mainstream Bible, we gain far more insight from the Nazarene Micah. Here we read, Our goddess imminent, our Emmanuela, shall come at that time not as a goddess but as a perfected woman. She'll be born in the ancient land of Eden that her feet may bless the land where she first came as the dove of Noah. Just the dove. Really? I'm just thinking out loud. So that, that sphere of um, thought that you could say is a, another mansion in my father's house that's already gone and left its, its um, image in the mind of the imagined mm. and what it was like. And the doubt that was sent out by, by knowledge was sent out back with knowledge branch which is the the uh, emblem for uh, the martial ship flag the olive branch black and white stripes see my beard's going to get black down here again mm. what the age i'll end up with a black and white beard Tougher back right. Yeah. 